couldn't fly. The train cost $935 round trip, and I couldn't afford that. So I took a 36-hour bus ride from Georgia to here to get here. And yes, I definitely wanted to be here. This is my first time. I was just diagnosed last year. I got here on a scholarship. Otherwise, I wouldn't get to come, so it's a great thing. We're happy you're here too. Uh, April 28th, I went to the emergency room, short of breath, and I thought I was just out of shape. They actually said, well, you know, we think that you just have some extra anxiety and was ready to send me home. And I said, wait a minute, let me show you something. And I got up and walked around the emergency room and my heart rate went to 150 and my oxygen dropped dangerously low. AC sat down and said, we've missed something. Now more and more Doctors are aware of our illness, but uh, at first my, my, my doctor thought that I had just a little um, after postpartum because I just had given birth to Matt. He was now 16 years old, mm -hmm. so yes, indeed it is. It's a long postpartum. I would say, <laughs> <laughs> indeed. And we can do this. Yeah. Well, we can do this. I was diagnosed six years ago. So I'd had open heart surgery and I wasn't getting better. Next thing I know, they told me about pulmonary hypertension. And I'd been a nurse for 13 years and never really heard about it. Mm. So, you know, for being one in the medical community and then ending up on the pump and everything, it's, it was a drastic change. What's it like to have pH? Fine. It's fine? Why? I like it and I'm special. Oh, it's an appetizer! Hey, buddy, can I have your hand? It's a green turtle. <laughs> All you need now is a cabana boy, a pool, and margarita. And you're ready, oops, you're ready to rock and roll. One, two, three. It's important that people see other people looking good, feeling good, and trying to do their best just to meet other people and see how they live with the disease and that you can live with the disease. Um, I was told I wasn't going to live, I was told I was going to go on disability and here I am eight years later still able to work and function. I became so afraid that if I didn't have this drug that death was imminent. I was told in the beginning again that you had five years to be on this particular, five years of making it. My name is Liz McCall and I'm the president of the BC Pulmonary Hypertension Society. Welcome, One thing is meeting other people it gives you such strength and it gives you hope to carry on because when you're first diagnosed you're told you have two to three years to live. You know, to meet people like Linda that have 14 years and they're still doing well, um, there's some people 24 years, uh, they call them long-term survivors after eight years. The topic uh, tonight was uh, one journey, many paths and that's exactly what I want to take you on. I, I think it, it's going to be a little bit of a whirlwind because it's been a, a long journey and it's a forward-looking journey. So please buckle up your seat belts. We're going on a trip. I used to be on the IV drug Flowland, which was a 24-hour 7 central line catheter. I am now taking Viagra which is a vasodilator and it works for pH. So I take five Viagra pills a day and I'm no longer hooked up to a pump. What I want to do is rip this last part off. This is one of the few conferences where patients and physicians are together and I think it's an incredible opportunity for that kind of sharing to occur and for us to hear from our patients and to see their enthusiasm and their burning desire to have this, this disease treated. When I started, we were experimenting with Flolan, which was the first drug that we could use. I'm on Flolan, and I have been for three years, so uh, that's something that's kept me alive. So now we have multiple drugs that we have available, and we have some new drugs that are going to be coming on the market soon. Tremendous. For me, uh, this was a lifesaver. I mean, uh, I mean, I was critical. I mean, without it, I wouldn't be standing here. When I was first diagnosed with this back in 1996, the doctor says, you have pulmonary hypertension. I'd never heard of it before. And he says, that means you have high blood pressure in your lungs. 
and there's no cure. And then the second thing he said to me is, do you have a will made out? It scared me to death. And he says, there's, again, no cure. And he says, you don't normally live five to 10 years with it. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm really glad with the research and the medicine and stuff. And uh, it makes a difference. And I am alive because of the medicine that they have found. Probably all of us would stay in bed and do the why bother? You know, what? why would you want to get up tomorrow and try? You wouldn't know anybody else to talk with or you wouldn't know that there's hope. And there is hope. And there is a possibility of a cure. And that's what we have to hang on to, is that a cure is possible. It helps you to not feel so alone. You know, because in the beginning you do because you don't know anybody else who has what you have. And you just feel like it's just you. And with an organization like this, you know that you're not alone. And that helps a great deal, more than anything, probably. Our real hope lies in the fact that we are not alone. If a village is needed to raise a child, then the whole world is needed to cure pulmonary hypertension. A small step, a seemingly small step at the basic science level, often translates to a major advance for the care of our patients. I have put finding adequate research funds so we can cope with this nightmare on the top of my legislative agenda. So at long last we can deal appropriately with this incredible condition. According to Buddha, the secret of health for both mind and body is not to mourn for the past, which is what a lot of people do when there is this change, not to worry about the future, which is not a very good way of dealing with illness, but to live the present moment wisely and earnestly. And I think that goes a long way in terms of some of the mission that I've been hearing about your organization today, trying to promote people living as actively as possible. beyond our wildest dreams. Could have no idea that it could ever get to this. We always hoped, but we just never thought this could happen. Now you have a choice, you have a chance. And people are living a lot longer. The old, they used to say two years and you're out of here. You know, you can't live more than two years. Now they're not telling people that we have a treatment. And if this one doesn't work, we try something else. And it's working, it is working.